Let's shut. Quickly pop in and share with you guys how I do my product shoot. So here we go. This is a very simple base. I'm still here in my YouTube space. Normally when I do put I do it. But the whole concept of today's shoot is just to show that you don't need a large space to put a shoot. Even in your small corner some setup. Um a simple and a basic point. I'm doing this quick shoot today of some basic products, just um, earrings. But I'm going to walk along with you guys as I go through it. So the first thing I would usually do is special products because you want the colors to be as accurate as possible. Take my white balance, break card here. And I set my white balance. Put this down. I'm going to go into my camera settings. Um, and before I get to that, let me show you guys what my setup looks like. I'm using my A7 III, which is boom arm. Right, so I'm looking doing a top down shoot. I have a Godox XW in all of the box here but i also have here my big video light that i use of the box inside an xl60 this one i really don't need but because of the video i put this on to give right typically i would be able to do for this small product i'll be able that's good Right, so to set the white balance, I'm going to go in my camera, custom white balance, set, capture that, custom white balance. Done. The next thing I'm going to do is use my color checker passport to take a kind of reference that for for color accuracy, I may not use it, but sometimes it's in product because I want the products to be represented accurate. That so I'm product. Let me switch over to my here on my piece. I'm headering into Capture One, so I have my A73. Connected by USB capture one. And this gives me a couple of options. As I have my A7 through and a boom arm, I don't want to touch it. Touching that camera can introduce shake. I don't want to produce that shake. So I'm going to leave this centered like that. What I'm going to do is take a shot. And I can actually take a shot right here through Capture One for this. Do that. Here we go. Capture One will load it. And what I have set. basically, I'm just looking to make sure that fully in there. In another video, I will show you guys why I use the color checker when I'm editing. See what the process of color checker. But basically, that's what I do. I my in camera white balance, color checker, um, second, guys. Let me just share this link to a few people. So as we go through, I will share, I will still continue to share some of the my setup with you guys, what I have. Uh, so that was it. We just did the color checker shot. 
We did a custom white balance in camera. Oh, and if you have the color checker passport as well, you could also use this gray card right here for your white balance. You don't need that card. I, was I just like that because it's bigger. But that's it with the color balance. Um, the white color checker just gives me a reference point. Basically, what it's doing is allowing me to capture all these color palettes, uh, what they are supposed to be, the brightness levels, luminance and the saturation levels based on the lighting things that I inside software you can export preset or a uh, adjustment preset or calibration preset based on those settings apply it to every image that you should. we will go through that in another video but for that um said I'm using my A7 III on the A7 of the Camera on 70 to 180. And now that I have those basics set up, the key then is to have the setup done properly because once you have the setup done, your shoot is going to be very smooth because it's going to just keep replicating the same thing over and over. So spend a little bit more time to get the initial done. And then once you have that initial setup done and going, the rest of them, it's basically just repetition same work that you've done uh, with the setup. All right, so like I said, I'm shooting um, earrings, right? Um, I want to just use a plain background. As you can see, I'm using my regular desktop table. I have my monitors on arms, so I'm out of space and what my desk looks like. So I'm just using my plain desk. However, uh, sometimes I use these rows of paper I got from the dollar store. So these are just basic art paper from the dollar store and you can find this in different colors and it's like two for a dollar or something so if i need to change the background i can lay one of these flat on the table use that as a background as well we will see as we go along if there is a need for that we will. but basically it's just that kind of sort, sort of stuff basic simple stuff we're going to start shooting in a minute just let me share uh, the links then we will get started Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm going to take the first shot, but I want to zoom in closely for this first shot. I'm going to set exposure on auto for now, and I'm going to use auto focus to grab the focus. As soon as I do that, I'm going to put the manual focus. Wire focus switch to manual focus so i have acquired focus automatically but i've switched my camera now to manual. and the reason is that i don't want to be touching it all the time 
I'm not really going to be moving stuff along because I'm going to try to keep all the products in the same spot as much as possible. And with that done, there's two ways. So I'm going to either trigger the shredder from within Capture One, or I'm going to use my remote trigger here to also capture. So I'm going to take the first shot, making sure everything is captured properly. And let me switch into Capture One. So we what is going on. And this is the first shot. It looks okay, but I want to send it more. So move this up a little bit. Take another shot. And I'm going to zoom in to a for sharpness. Up as This is one of the reasons why I let you put it because then you're not waiting to finish your shoot and then go in to post and see that your photos are out of focus. There you go. You can stop this. The focus is good. The next thing I want to do is because this is going to be used primarily for social media, um, I want to be able to sort of Crop this to a square aspect ratio, and I can see some spots as well here. So I may need a little bit of clean. So I'm going to make sure the table is clean enough. Avoid those spots, guys. If you're in the chat, let me know if you can hear me properly. If everything is good, if you have any questions as well, you can also leave that in the comments. sure my table is clean enough um these things i can easily take out in post but like i always say it's better to try to get it as accurate as possible while shooting than to try to fix stuff in post you want to avoid spending too much time on the editing the better you can get it in camera the better right so here we go Now I'm going to take another test shot. Oh, did I see that spot's better? Really want to. So I might not use my table because the table looks have too much of a mess on it. So instead of using the table, I am going to put one of these. paper craft paper and use that instead i'm going to go for this one first try that okay so this now if you still want to stick with white um the other thing you could use is similar paper in white, or you could also use uh, foam core board. So I have a couple of them somewhere around here, but you could use a foam core board as well, just to keep the background clean. That would work. So I'm going to see, because we've changed the background, this background, I know work with all the products because I see that some of the products are really similar in color to the background, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to take another test shot. Let it load in capture one. Here we go. So 
what looking like. Okay. Good. Background is cleaner than what I had. I'm trying to use the pure white background. Table was. Uh, but as you can see here, um, I need a little bit more separation. So I'm not going to use these products. I'm going to use some these, this background for some of them. And for some of the other products, I may change the background. Try this set right here, this background. How the background is looking? I think I like it. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is try to see how this will look if I go to a one to one aspect ratio. So I'm going to go in my crop section here in cap one. I'm going to do a square crop. Take the here. Now, don't worry about this because this is just a visual crop. Inside of Capture One, you're still going to have the full image. Um, if you want the crop to apply, you can just set this as a set. Have Capture One apply this crop to every image as they come in. But it's really not permanent because it's just in Capture One. So if you want to ever expand this for like a full, the full width, you can still do that. Here we go. I'm gonna come in. Right, so there we go. Let's keep shooting. Because right now I have this set up. So with that done, I know where to position the product for every single shoot. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this like an assembly line, right? Um, and if you want the the one by one crop to apply, you can actually have it applied on, on input, uh, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it as comes in. But I will from time to time check on the one to one crop and see how it is good. Uh, if you want to change any of your exposure settings, you can change them right here within one. That's it. Even the focus in here, uh, but I like to manual focus, so I've set my camera. Focus, you can check, double click here if I light that one up, zoom in so that edges of the product is really sharp. But for some reason, I don't think I'm really liking the red background but let's do a few items with it so i'll set these two aside bring in the next two lining them up approximate same spot where the other ones were and start load it go as you can see capture one is applying that one to one crop and leave it as it's because I'm not really worried about the crop because we go in here, you can see that. And 
you can resize it just that crop any one but i feel like our products are too small so i'm going to zoom in a little bit more a bit tighter products Very important. Always would double check custom back shop. Be check for time to time for that. Plus. So I think I'm good with the focus. If you're not really comfortable with focus, the easiest way to get this done is to focus in automatic and then switch your camera into manual focus. So let me switch you guys back to capture one. Take a shot. This is what we are now. Kind of zoomed in a little bit more on the product that the crop we can always get around with. good check focus take your so product is stock shop good right so let's go ahead with a couple more products In all of the stuff I'm trying to put as much as possible, try to position items around approximately the same spot. So having a remote trigger is very important. If you don't have a remote trigger, like I said, Capture One can do that for you. You can use the Capture button right here in the camera section. To do your remote triggering, I'm going to turn off this crop and go back to a crop size. Regular. Take another one, let's trigger it for time. There we go. So you see that your stuff is getting cut out. The best bet is readjust, make sure nothing is getting cut out. I think I'm having a cut out because I have zoomed in a lot. The purpose of zooming in is to try to put more buses on the product. Because these are small items, I want to make sure that they are big in the frame. But from time to time, you want to check. So that's why I sometimes leave this crop on. Um, for Instagram, you do the four by five aspect ratio for the crop. That crop. I think I'll just leave it on the IG crop because most of these is way. So leave that on IG crop. That one is done. Bring this in. Frame. 
Not a shot. Here. Right, we put that out. Bring the nest set in. One thing you can also do is that once you find the position, you can put a small mark underneath where the first one is going to go. So you know where to position that item all the time. Take another shot. This one is a little bit outside of the crop zone, uh, but you still have the full image so you can bring it in. But I still want to take this again because I want to center it. Going to shift up. A Don't want it to cut out like that. Take another shot and see. Perfect. Oh, thanks, Paul. It just says, Why are you using red? I mean, well, the, the, I wanted to use my white background, and I might, because I don't want to go back upstairs to grab the white background, but I don't have a white background with me. But when I try to use the, my decks, I have too much of um, a mess on the table. Even though it's not visible to the eye, when I take that shot from the camera, I can see that... Let's try that once more so you guys can get an understanding why I'm not using my white background. I can see a lot of dark spots on my table. And with that, I can see that in the image. So if I do this right here, and I do the, take the shot. Once the shot come in here, let me switch back to You could see that my background right here on the table is not clean enough. Um, really, I can use a white foam core board, but I that's why I'm using different colors. For but normally, yeah, this is how I'll do the white, but I just have too much of the dark spots on table that takes away from the whole beauty so that's why i'm not using um actually there is a white phone call so let's try that um this one i don't really like this because it's a little bit too reflective uh but let's try that and see what we get with it right so it doesn't have to try different things so I'm going to try out with this whiteboard that I have here. Drop. Okay. So I'm going to try out with this white reflective surface I have here. Oh, to come so you guys can see better. Yeah. So I have this white reflective surface. Uh, it's not a foam core board. I think it's a dry erase board that I got instead of a foam core board. Um, and this can work as well, except that it's very reflective. But in this case, it may actually work out really well. So let's try with this one and see if we can get a clean white background. The challenge with a white background is that if you have any dirt, any tiny amount of dirt on the surface, it's going to be very hard and very visible, right? So you always want... So you always want to make sure that your background is as clean as possible when you are doing white stuff. So, that guys. Right, so now we have this in here. Let's take a shot and see what we get with that. And there we go. So this background, zoom in so we can take a look. Capture one. And as you can see, this is a lot more cleaner. Right? There's a few dark spots that is visible in here that I really can't see. 
guest of that. Um, ideally, I, if I was prepped to use the white, I would have used, probably have a white cone core ready for this, which is plain. But for now, I think we can use this. So let's use this for some of the products as well, so we can have kind of variety with a background. Properly. This board, another shot. There we go. All right. Probably side as well. Let me get another set in here. them prop you switch to one so you guys can see this they come in and maybe I'll put the other one there we go so let's leave it this way so you guys can see both worlds all right let's go take another shot it come in beautiful right I might rotate them in um, in post, but that's fine for now because because of the way I have the camera hang. Um, or I could just position the earrings this way. Make sure facing up the right way. Shot of that and see. Could face the right way, right? Good. To see a little bit of dust and stuff but yeah i will clean that out if need be not as bad as using my raw desk let me put this aside bring in another set so you guys can see how quickly we're moving with this right once you have the basic setup done it's pretty easy because you are just replicating the same thing over and over again um, making it very easy to go along because all you're doing is just positioning the items and shooting. You're not adjusting camera settings. You're not changing any of that stuff because they are all already set. And as you're shooting in the same spot, your focus and everything is all set. So all you have to do is just keep shooting. From time to time, just check your focus. Make sure everything is in focus, everything is working out the way you want it to, and you keep shooting, right? All right, so let's do shoot. Comes in. Here we go. Check your focus. Within is clean. If you use Capture One, Capture One has a tool. There is a tool, Focus Mark, right here, that you can use to check a focus. Not always accurate, but most of the time it works. So when you turn this on, it will show you the green areas. The green areas basically is Capture One's way of telling you the area that is in. Once you use that, you can actually just go through your all your catalogs. Hopefully, have it. What are they? I'm, the item is in focus and I don't usually rely on that but always try to in on the camera make sure you put in focus but you need to double check who can I don't think you should better to just punch in like that make sure your items are coming up as they this shot I'm going to take again because loops in here is a little bit out of Frame. I want to get everything in. I can get everything in frame. That and take another shot. Right now, get everything in the frame. Um, I could also play around with some of these. 
fun of it. Play around with some of them. Take some shots. Side. Um. Do this ones here. Properly. Yeah. So, add a little variation. And the shot. Probably prefer that better, but I'm just loop. Take one shot. Good. That this is just a basic shoot. Um, nothing fancy, just flat lay, top to bottom. Shoot. I think I know we're all on lockdown. So whenever you get a chance, just pop in here with uh, a few, and I'll try to do a few more of these live sessions, go along, just stuff like that. Um, and for those, if you join late, like I said, I'll probably just quickly walk through the setup. I'm using the A7 III, so if okay. Okay. I'm using my A7 III coming in here on a boom arm straight onto the product. And I have the Godox XL60 in a small aperture mini, light low mini, which is coming in here with that light. But then I also still have up here my another Godox XL60 in the big dot box. This is what I usually use for my videos. I mean, like I said, it's a small space. This is my regular YouTube desk. I just sit right somewhere here to record the videos. But for this session, converting that whole thing into a shoot table. So if you look from this angle as well, this is my angle of the other view. This is the product. This is my table. And I line up my products here. And everything is coming in. But my A7 III is stood up to the PC. So I can show you guys whatever I'm doing. Go on as well. All right, that's the basic setup I'm using. I'm going to go ahead and finish keep shooting the products better. Up, up. Good. Everything is in the frame. Take a shot. So that looks good. Put them aside. Bring in the next. One them the way you want you can do this in any space you don't need a big space to do these basic shoots most people tend to think as long as you have an idea of how to set up basic lighting and stuff stuff is pretty Right, there we go. 
let's see. Next, bring in. Go in. Good. Let's do more. Okay, go. Okay. Yeah. Them to come in, move them a little bit. Closer. Good. Right. Keep cleaning. Go. Good. Something on. I bring. And if you're wondering what settings I'm using, you can see them right here in Capture One. I'm shooting at 100 of a second, um, ISO 500 at 5.6. For that shots, I'm really not looking for the after sale, so I'm shooting somewhere anywhere from 5.6 to 8, just to give myself a little bit more room. Oh, hey, Mix. Is my audio is cutting out. Oh, that's strange. Let me know if it's still cutting out. Okay. All right, let's take another shot. Oh. 
check these out and I'm going to bring in one. So like I said, the initial setup is the time to set up your, your struts and the setup done. The rest is straightforward. You're just repeating that same process over and over. Right. A little dot. But with that, right for now, that more. <laughs> Yo, Catalyst, what's up, man? Man at work, you know, late night, late night shoots. Yeah, just doing a quick, small little product shoot but to share, you know. Late night session. Ah, audio keeps breaking up for some reason. I'm not sure if it's because of the way I have it positioned. Uh, let me try to see. Okay, look guys, let me know if it's any better. If not, I might. Um, overhead mic but let me know if this solves the problem bro <laughs> some basic light setup nothing fancy just in the two good as xl 60s one small one right here good as xl 60 aperture light dome and I also have my another XL60 right here in the box. That's what I use for lighting my. This extra one, this big one here, I have it on because. Uh, but normally you can fit with just one XL. Or mini light. I'm using the small mini light one because these are small items. Small items bring the light in closer because it's smaller. And but because the items are small, it's actually larger. So guys, give me a second. Let me see if I can switch microphones. Go ahead. How this one work better? Will be in the shot, but you can leave with that for a second. One quick second, I'll right back. So, here, guys, just trying to fix audio stuff.
Hey guys, let me know how the audio sounds now. I just switched over to the boom up mic, so hopefully that solves the issue with the audio cutting out. Uh, let me know in the comments if it's better now. All right, so continue with the shoot. Got this in here. Take another shot. Oh, in. Let me check focus. Slide focus to my bit more. Bring everything into focus. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Not sure why my wireless cutting out. I will take a look at that later. All right. So if you guys are wondering for the trigger, um, because I have this on a boom arm, because I have the A73 on a boom arm right here, this boom arm will vibrate a lot if I touch the camera. So to prevent that handshake, um, there's two options. You either use a wireless trigger, or you can also just use um, Capture One to trigger it. So if I go into Capture One, um, you have that trigger button right here, and you can basically just trigger your camera from within Capture One. That way you are avoiding shakes not introducing any handshakes into the camera uh, for the focus i have this set to manual focus from time to time i will check just so um e it's up shock up i mean side in the next product It is more products like these fun. Um, you know, for larger products, I probably would do it upstairs. More products like this, small office spaces, more than adequate. Even up to medium sized products, shoot right here, space without any issue. Oh. All right. But as we go, seems to be stuff coming in from time to time. And this is in frame. If your cropping seems off sometimes, don't worry about it because go in here and just round. I have this clip that capture one to crop Instagram up as the pictures come in and give me most of this is going to be used dropping them here as they, they come in hey okay. guys if the guys in here 
you want to buy some of these products for your wife, check out my Madison David Collection Instagram. Madison David make beautiful Afrocentric clothings, earrings, a whole bunch of stuff, bags, stuff like that. Check out Madison David. So, and in the next one, one is So someone may be wondering why I'm not using flash. I am not using flash because I'm not using <laughs> I know I use flash a lot. Uh, but there are some times where flash is overkill and you can do a quick basic setup with just continuous lighting. So sometimes I use my XL system, which I use I mainly use for my video light. I use them for products like these. So it's a simple, you're not really buzzing around too much. What you see is what you get. So that's the benefit of content. Flash has its purpose. We use flash most outdoors portrait shoot. But for stuff like this, in a controlled environment, I will use continuous light. Right guys, so we are making progress. Okay. the way in the next set I've learned anything from my wife, but very particular. Earrings. Try to keep it in there, right? Shot. Here, as the shot comes in, I think that's good. So when I finally added these, um. I might probably just pop in a little bit tighter if the product more emphasis. See, see, and I actually, and the way I'm shooting them, I'm shooting them in such a way. I'm editing. Hey, Lydia, how you doing? <laughs> I know, Lydia. It's it's what? It's five a.m. for you guys. Five thirty. It's actually like what? Of midnight. A little bit up of of here. At twelve twenty a.m. <laughs> Whilst we are about to go to sleep, you guys are waking up. 
right, let's do the next set. Yeah. Take the shot. And go next. Just like that, guys, we're almost done. One at a time. Quick setup, quick shoot. So imagine you have 50, 20 of these to shoot. Once you have the initial setup done, you're just positioning and shooting them like that because you don't have to move your camera, you don't have to change your settings, you don't change your focus spot in the setup once all you do is just position the items the good thing is you can see the things as they come in the images as they come into capture one and if you don't like it right there you make adjustments get it as good as you can and post So if you guys are wondering, I'm on manual focus, but I'm using focus peaking. Evenings are so beautiful. <laughs> yeah over here we are stuck at home with snow outside nowhere to go so <laughs> so this is back shop this looks a little smaller so I'm pop it in And look at the and I'm missing much. Okay, so let's do this one. Maybe just out. This one here. Yes, they are. And they are right, right here in Canada. I said ladies if you want to go check them out check out um madison david collection on instagram
And this is the last piece. Feels like we've gone through these in short period. That's all because we took the time to prep work area. So once you have the work area properly prepped, what you're doing is just fiddling with settings, you know, settings. All of them are constant, changing the products going in. Awesome. So that was the last one. Um, I'm going to go back and I'm going to shoot some of these products again. But I'll be shooting them on a colored background. I'm going to switch out the background. Shoot some of the colored background. Just to give some variety. I'm going to take out board and let me go to two. And in place of that, I'm probably going to, uh, what do you guys think? Let's try a black background. We did a white background. So let's try a black background. and see how some of the lighter colored ones, like these yellow ones, will look against the black background. So, same thing. We're not really changing much in terms of settings. We might just bump out. Those are a little bit black. Doesn't stand out really. Oh, the first shot and the adjustment. Okay. So, oh, I think I got them. Okay, let's put and see how we do with this one. All right, so guys, let me know <laughs> what you guys think about the black background. That might Let's... Let me know what you guys think about the black background. I think we should. Crop the black background idea. I think it's okay. Chip. Bump up. It's just a bit. Thing. Okay, so let's shoot a few on this black background. Focus.
All right, guys. So thank you for watching. I think I'm going to call it this live at night. <laughs> thank you guys for hanging in here with me tonight. Hope you guys picked things from this. You know, in the comment section, what you think about the setup, the products. That if you want to check out these products, you can check out the vendor, the customers, IG. Addison David collection. All right. Thank you guys for hanging out. See you in the next time. Go live. Stay blessed. Keep creating.